Hello everybody and welcome to TSS Weekly, the Spotter Stand Weekly. Remember the video I put out about Michael McDowell, Kyle Busch's situation and all that stuff? Well, this is what that's called. It's the second edition of this. I'm calling it TSS Weekly. It's like the weekly Friday, Saturday NASCAR news show going into the next week with all the minor news and major news that you need to get um, before the race weekend. So I'm filming this Friday night, not exactly sure when it's going to come out, so the news is only current about to then. Uh, we got a full day of stuff tomorrow, Xfinity practice and qualifying early in the morning, cup practice and qualifying in the afternoon, and then the Xfinity race, um, as well as an ARCA race Saturday night, and then the cup race obviously Saturday afternoon. So I want to get started with some little blurbs, like uh, like the ones we have on our spotter stand website. So number one, probably the most important one, and on a somewhat sorrow note, Kyle Busch and his family, I assume Rexton, Samantha, and Lennox, uh, they um, were unharmed and they were successfully able to, I guess, escape, get out of the Mall of America, which of course had a shooting, that mall located in Minnesota. Um, up in the Irish Hills, the Brooklyn, Michigan area, likely wanted to explore the Midwest, explore the northern part of the United States, went to the Mall of America, um, and unfortunately they went on a uh, bad day. Thankfully they're okay, and it sounds like most of the public that was at the mall is okay as well. So I try to not make this a uh, news channel, political channel, or anything like that, but sometimes when it involves NASCAR, you kind of got to talk about it. So um, I am doing just that. Um, also, Tony Stewart put out a very interesting tweet on the old tweeter machine the other day, uh, suggesting he might want to return to IndyCar. He said, Think you, seeing all the IndyCar fans and the IndyCar NASCAR doubleheader going on made me think, what can I do that would be special for the fans with a hashtag IndyCar and hashtag NASCAR? So you have to be thinking, uh, what exactly does Tony Stewart mean by that? We know he's been probably wanting to run uh, you know, an Xfinity race in the in the, uh, at the Indy Pro Course, and we know he'd love to get back uh, to IndyCar. You know, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, they were big open wheel fans, and likely would have been two great open wheel drivers. Um, you know, had they not been uh, great NASCAR drivers, so that's very interesting. It makes you think whether Tony Stewart's talking about running possibly, you know, the Brickyard 400, uh, the NASCAR race, or the Horizon 200, I guess, or the Xfinity race, or is he meaning the Indy 500? the Indy Road Course. I think he might be meaning the Indianapolis 500. I'm not exactly sure. Obviously, we know that it's you know, the greatest spectacle in racing, one of the best sporting events in the world up there, part of the um, Super Bowl, Olympics, um, Daytona 500, World Series, NHL, Stanley Cup Finals, the, the, the NBA Finals, all that stuff. You know, Wimbledon, the, the, the dog show, the Westminster dog show, all that stuff up there um, is certainly uh, the Indianapolis 500. Stewart, obviously, a great NASCAR driver, a great IndyCar driver, and an avid lover of the sport of IndyCar. So you have to wonder what he is planning here. So, um, what else? Oh, auto owners extended their sponsorship with Martin Truex Jr. So they are good for, I believe, till 2025, it said. Um, and I think that's a little blurbs. So, yeah. Uh, go check out the Spotter Shane website where you should have most of those posted. Uh, Brent Moffat, also not a member of the O2 team anymore. Sponsorship issues, just like Brandon Brown, who is in the 68th this weekend, thank you. But uh, looking towards the big stuff, um, 3F Racing. Now, earlier in the week, there was a fake tweet put out, or not a fake tweet, it was a real tweet put out by some uh, jabronis, some, some fakers. Um, that um, it was it was a Bill Elliott racing tweet. It was a Bill Bill Elliott uh, racing Twitter account. It was not real, obviously. Bill Elliott he tried the driver owner thing once. Um, yeah, that that didn't that didn't exactly work out for him. So um, now trying to um, now now you know whenever we see these things, be obvious you should be a little spe uh, skeptical. People can post anything on the internet. And then I saw a tweet from an account called 3F Racing. It said, you know, we're three friends in Germany. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, um, yeah, likely fake again. But then I see Bob Pockers follows them. Justin Allgaier follows them, I believe, on Instagram. So, um, yes. 
uh, it, it looks legit, at least to me, and what I'm seeing from Bob Cochris. Okay. Um, hang on. Go back here. He says, the team plans to run some races towards the tail end of this year on the road courses. Uh, or at least the road will maybe, it says they're planning. It says they would uh, likely have like a former F1 star. Um, so that is, it's very interesting because we don't, I don't know a ton of F1 drivers. I'm not an F1 history um, nerd like I am for, you know, NASCAR history or American history or anything like that. Um, yeah, so let's see what Bob Hawker said the other day. Uh, the team plans to run some races near the end of this year and then a part-time schedule next year with an eye on full-time cup racing in 2024. Drivers, sponsors, etc. to be determined. Um, and personally, I, I mean, if Bob Hawkers is saying stuff, um, you know, it, it looks legit. They, apparently they got a bunch of their assets from Newark Racing, so like they're not going to be seeing a ton of Greg Biffle and the money team anymore, which is unfortunate. Um, but it is very, very interesting um, because we don't see a ton of stuff like this. You can't really just come and start up an NASCAR Cup Series team um, without a bunch of money or a bunch of assets. If this is really just three friends, I, I feel like there's some celebrity friends or some friends that have some deep, deep pockets um, because this is just kind of odd, kind of unprecedented. Um, but it appears Justin Allgaier might be the driver for a few races. I doubt he'll want to go full-time, who knows? But his first stint full-time at Cup, y'all remember 2014 and they do 15 or not? I can't remember. I think they did do 15 full-time with Allgaier. Um, that did not do too good. Now he's turned himself into one of, best, into one of the best ever in Xfinity. He's still looking for that championship um, in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, which I believe will be someday. Maybe this year's good to see the event. But uh, it is, it's certainly an interesting concept to see a European NASCAR team. They're going to ship a lot of stuff over. They're moving from Germany to Charlotte. Um, it's very interesting. Now, we're not completely 100% sure for it's real, but we're 95% sure for showing it. Bob Pachris, a very good source of information within the NASCAR um, community. And I doubt just Nogar would follow a troll on social media or Bob Pachris. So this seems to be legit. Um, I'm not exactly sure, you know, we, that's essentially all we know. All we know is what's been put up on Twitter by Bob Pockers, so we don't know a lot right now. There's been a lot of reckless speculation, um, but I'm really interested to see, first off, is this 100% legit? Second off, how will this team perform? How can it, how can this team adapt, you know, some F1 drivers? And if they do plan to go full time, um, it's a great time to do it because of the next gen car making everything more cost effective because the amount of road courses on the schedule plus the street course in, in Chicago. So this is, um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a good time to come in. It's better than coming in in like 2020 or, or 2016, right in the middle of the gen uh, six or right at the end of the gen six. Um, so I applaud them for making the decision in 2022. They might have wanted to start getting some planted, uh, or planted, not planted planned in 2021 just to race full time next year maybe, but I digress. Um, it's still a really cool move. It's a really cool opportunity for Allgaier, uh, if it is him, and whoever the F1 star for me. Uh, moving on, Noah Gregson. Now, it's not confirmed yet that he's going to Petty GMS, but it is very likely that he's going to Petty GMS. We know he's been leading candidate for that 42 ride ever since it was said that Ty Dillon would be let go. Um, I think it's a good choice. I know, you know, he's run a few races with Colleague, but I think that 16 car likely needs to stay with Almendinger, maybe Hemrick, maybe Castle wants to start cup races for them. That can be a, kind of their trophy in a car while Haley continues to develop and tries to uh, be their full-time championship driver. Um, but if Noah Gregson does go over there, maybe bring Dave Ellens over, the former, his former crew chief and what was it, trucks, or maybe a little bit of vicinity, or maybe they'll bring, um, Luke, uh, what, what's his last name, Dan? Luke Lambert, who went to the championship four in 2014, Ryan Newman, uh, over from his current experience ride. They seem to be jumping really well. They've won, what, three, four races already? They're, they're a big contender in the NASCAR Xfinity Series of JRM. Um, I thought Gregson might want to stay in Xfinity one more year. Not that I think he's not cup ready. I think he is, but just, you know, wanting to go see if he can get a championship, because I think Ty Gibbs is far and away the favorite. If not him, Adrian Allmendinger, then you got Allgaier, you got Barry that's running really good. 
So it's a stacked Xfinity field at the top this year for uh, no breaks and compete against. Maybe Ty Gibbs goes to cut next year. You know, we don't exactly know what happens, but um, I, I think it's very likely that this does happen. I think if you're Petty GMS, you have a young driver, a little bit of a brash driver that you would need to calm down. He'd probably be the most wild driver Petty GMS has had. They've had some stoic guys, you know, Bubba Wallace, Eric Almarola, um, AJ Allmendinger, you know, a little fiery in his younger days, but not too bad. You look back, you know, Bobby Hamilton, wasn't it uh, oh, Rick somebody? If you remember that, wasn't it like Rick Wilson that replaced Petty right after Petty left in 92? Um, yeah, it was certainly an interesting venture there, but um, it'd be a, a wild Bronco they have to kind of tame and calm down, but it'd be an interesting project. Richard Petty, the best driver in NASCAR history, are up there. I think he's the best. Um, a very calm, older guy versus Noah Gregson, who's, you know, ripping his fire suit, getting all the ladies, doing Elvis impersonations in Nashville, generally being a party-hardy, crazy guy. He's like Tony Stewart on steroids. Maybe not as angry as Tony Stewart, but a little bit more of an aggressive driver than Tony Stewart, a little more, you know, of a partier than Tony Stewart, maybe. But uh, he, he fits a Tony Stewart persona a lot. If he was driving Ford, he'd probably go to SHR. But, um, Chevy doesn't have a lot of top teams to pick from in general. I mean, when you're thinking about it, you know, it's really Trackhouse and uh, Hendrick. Those are the main two. Then you, look, you have Pollock and Spire and now 3F Racing, most likely. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a good pickup uh, for Betty GMS. If it is 100% true, I think he definitely should be the leading candidate. Uh, and we'll just see what happens there. Uh, Kyle Busch. Now, Kevin Harvick at Pocono. Um, or no, it was at Indy this week. Instead, he'd love to have Kyle Busch as a teammate. A lot of the speculation was Kyle Busch is leaving. Uh, I'd probably say 78% of the fan base thought Kyle Busch was leaving after this year. Now that's kind of tempered down. Kyle Busch said he'd be willing to sign a one-year deal, like Brad Kozlowski did in 2020 with Penske, or, or in 21 with Penske, um, or make less money, take less money. And I think that's a great decision. I said that's probably what Kyle Busch is going to have to do. And if that's what it takes, uh, you know, NASCAR drivers want to win more than anything, and I think Kyle Busch, if he wants to win, needs to save kids. His SHR is all fine and dandy, but they're not good. Their equipment's not good. Um, their drivers are struggling right now. They only have two in the playoff or one in the playoffs right now. Briscoe and Hardwick's out right now. I'm a roll of the Alcuster is far out in another galaxy of horribleness. Um, but um, yeah, I, I really don't understand. Um, why you want to go to SHR or you could remain at JGR and I get the asking price, I get he's one of the best to ever do it, but uh, at some point you kind of got to eat a slice of humble pie, say if I want to continue winning, I got to do what I got to do. Kyle Busch ain't at the top of his game anymore and going to SHR certainly won't help that. So I think it's, it'd be wise to take less money. I think that the needle is slightly, slightly started trending more towards, um, yes, Kyle Busch is going to stay. So, um, I still think that's what happens, but I've got to say that 41 with how bad Custer's doing, I don't know if they can go you and know, buy out his dad or anything, but that might be the best option for Cowboys if he doesn't. Um, and now finally, the biggest story of the week, most likely, Kurt Busch won't return for the third straight race. Oh my gosh. He says he hopes to be back at Richmond, but then again, he said he hopes to be back at any third straight race he's missing due to a concussion. He, uh, he, he posted a video on Twitter about him being at a soccer game in Charlotte. Uh, glad to see him having fun, making the most of the situation. He had a birthday yesterday with Jeff Gordon, so happy 44th team, Kurt. Um, but I don't think he's going to, I don't know if he's going to retire after this year or not, guys. I mean, you asked me before this year, I'd say, no, he's racing at least till the end of 24. Now I'm saying, oof. Uh, or at least till the end of 23. Now I'm saying, ooh, I don't know, he might retire this year. But it depends on how, if he's out for one or two more weeks, he might just decide to hang it up after this year's over. It depends playoff waiver-wise if he can be back for the playoffs. I think he will be, but Ty Gibbs has done a bang-up job. Um, you know, what, 16th of Pocono, 17th of Indy. Um, he, he did a stand-up job, you know, he did a really good job. Um, he's filling in, doing what was expected of him. First two cup starts, hey, he survived the carnage at Indy. He survived the melee of Pocono, and, and he's got himself an average finish of 16 and a half from NASCAR Cup Series after two starts. Um, that's really, really good, really, really solid. Um, 
but it stinks for Kurt Busch. He's going to lose a lot more points, and if we do get 17 winners, which only 40 is left looking more and more unlikely, that'd be really interesting. Slipping back, he's losing, going to lose like what 180 points over these last three weeks. So he's hoping Briscoe and Cindric and Bowman continue to falter this or falter this week. Um, Bowman's luck, I wouldn't doubt if he wrecked on that one. Man. Tough summer being a Bowman fan, but they do this every summer. But uh, yeah, it sinks for Kurt, but oh well, what you gonna do, you know? But yeah, I think that's about all we got for the news cycle this week. Look for the pre-race show. Might be before this, might be after this. No, yeah, I guess you're... But uh, anyway, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below, share the video on the channel with your friends, family, or anyone you know like NASCAR, and visit our Spider Stand website. Thank you so much for watching. I am Samuel Stubbs from the Spider Stand, and I'll see you in the next one.